Okay, so back in the Halcyon days of January 2021, I made a video all about my current thoughts on Star Citizen and its seemingly infinite development process, uh, some of the promise that it had, some of the problems that it had, and then why I kept coming back to it every few months, normally in between a few other games that I would be playing. Uh, and that video did pretty well for our fledgling YouTube channel. The interesting thing about the response to that video, though, was that a decent number of people seemed to be focusing in on a specific line that I had written in the script, this one. The overall growth concerning its massively hyped and ever-pending release and the actual measurable results that Cloud Imperium Games has managed to produce over the past 11 years it's been worked on doesn't often cause people to sing the game's praises. A few people took issue with that particular line. Not the reaction I expected at all. Essentially, what I had said was Star Citizen's development timeline took 11 years, which, you know, is super long. And the reason I said that was because Chris Roberts essentially told us that during this CitizenCon 2014 presentation. Take a look. I think we first had our conversations back in, uh, well, even maybe 2010. 2010 yeah. And then when I started on the, the actual prototype, at the end, like 2011 towards the end, you started That's to right. help out. Now, most of the comments that were focused on that 11 years bit seemed to take issue with the fact that I had included pre-production as a part of Star Citizen's entire development process. Now, I've never made a video game, but I have made short films, feature films, and documentaries for many, many years. And every single film industry professional will tell you that pre-production is not only one of the most important parts of the entire production process, but that when you're considering the entire timeline of a film's creation, that pre-production part is absolutely essential and should be counted among the time spent creating the film as a whole. For me at least, there's no difference between hardline production, which is normally programming, design work, asset creation, and the pre-production phase. You can't have the actual process of development happen without the pre-production beforehand to create a groundwork for a game, especially not one like Star Citizen. As I said before, Chris Roberts started to conceptualize and work on early pre-production of Star Citizen back in 2010. After a year of this, he pulled in Sean Tracy of Crytek and eventually other artists, designers, and engineers like Paul Rendell to help build the prototype that they would eventually use to help make their now famous or infamous, depending on what you think, Kickstarter such a wild success to the tune of $6.2 million. Right now, Star Citizen is sitting on a raised production budget of over $350 million, which makes it the most expensive game ever made. Now, I'm not going to go into the insanity that is the crowdfunding campaign for Star Citizen or the less than ideal macro transactions they've since implemented to account for much of the additional funding. But I will say this. In addition to the intense feature creep that Chris Roberts is infamous for, Cloud Imperium had to be created. An entire studio needed to be made from essentially the ground up in order to take on the massive task of creating the universe of Star Citizen and Squadron 42. That's no small task, and it was certainly not helpful to have to create a studio in motion with all the other usual hiccups that starting a big production can have. So from the Kickstarter, CIG has released a steady, if not entirely on time series of updates to both the core game of the persistent universe of Star Citizen and to Squadron 42. Though from my understanding, almost no one except for a few select citizens have gotten to see what's going on with the single player campaign. All that to say, Star Citizen's timeline of development is wildly different from any other game that's ever been made, for better or for worse. CIG is trying something new here, and they're developing brand new technologies, new systems, and methodologies for a game of this scale, all while having players active within its own alpha version of the PEU. Now, this isn't an excuse to say that there haven't been problems. There have been, as many, many people before me have expounded upon greatly. The lack of communication on certain things like Squadron 42 has driven some to leave the game entirely, with many demanding refunds and swearing off it altogether. Others, like myself, are sort of at a crossroads. The game has so much promise and has such a clear passion behind it, but it just so often feels like it's stuck in this endless rut of feature creep or, more often, feature pushback. 
The amount of roadmap items that I feel like would make a big difference in gameplay are constantly pushed back for more cosmetic changes or enhancements. Now don't get me wrong, making the game look better and adding unique features is important, but core gameplay experiences need to be vastly improved upon, as does the backend tech that allows for the universe to function in the way that it's meant to. Creating in-game fire extinguishers and space mines shouldn't even be on the radar for the development schedule until its base systems are up and functional. Like I said in the last video, server meshing and iCache are paramount when it comes to creating that sort of seamless interactivity and persistence that Chris Roberts so often talks about achieving. And yes, CIG has made it abundantly clear that they're going to take as much time as they need and I guess at this point, most people have already made up their minds about Star Citizen. Like I said, I'm sort of in the middle, and I can see things from both sides. I guess I just want what was promised in the original Kickstarter. Now, some of those things have been fulfilled, and others clearly haven't. But I'm still hopeful that eventually, even if it takes another 10 years, which is an absolutely insane thing to say about a game in development, that we will have something eventually. Now, will it have been worth the wait? I have no idea. Will it be any good? Maybe. But for now, all we have are a lot of unfulfilled promises, a very pretty universe to explore, and many, many hours of eager waiting to endure. So what are your thoughts about Star Citizen's timeline? Do you think that we'll ever get a formal release of Squadron 42 or even just the Star Citizen Persistent Universe? What do you think of Cloud Imperium Games and Chris Roberts? Let me know in the comments, and again, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you liked this video, and stay tuned for more. Hey everyone, this is Kyle from Subpixel. If you like this video and you're still around, give us a like, give us a subscribe, give us a kiss.